Good morning, guys. So who is God? Well, the scripture says that God is love. The scriptures say that God is light. He is a creator, the creator. God is holy. God is faithful. God is a provider. God is just. God is merciful and compassionate. God is righteous. He's a righteous judge. And God is all powerful. So over a thousand different definitions of who God is. These are just 10. Now, when it comes to our role with God on earth, you know, we have to remember that we are created in God's image. We are his creation. So that ties us into him. That's to say that if you're disconnected from the source, you're going to be withering. You're going to be broken. You're going to be uh, decaying. You're going to be feeling lousy. So we need to we need to create that establishment between covenant with our relationship with our Lord, with our God, or with our Creator. And when you do that, you get your nourishment from Him. So just like food gives you nourishment, God gives you nourishment for your soul, right? Your spirit on the inside needs to be edified, needs to be blessed, needs to be cared for, tended to, right? And so we go through a lot of wilderness in this world, you know, in this life. A lot of problems come our way, but God is what sustains us through it all. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. He's a protector, a defender. He didn't say that you weren't going to go through hard times. He actually said the, the opposite. He said, you're going to go through hard times, but I have given you my word, my Bible, um, so that you can understand how to navigate through life. And we're going to get into it. We're going to learn what the Bible how, how the Bible says to navigate through decision making. Um, we're going to talk about uh, different videos. Not all in this one video. But different videos as they come out now and now. More and more. We're going to talk, touch on like who to be. What does God require of us? Here I wrote a few things down. Such as you know. He gave us dominion over the animals. Over the earth. Altogether. Right. But there's a way to go about it, right? Like, for example, look at the forests. Like, there was a point in time where cutting trees was necessary and this and that. But when they started to taste what the money that was coming, they did a whole lot more uh, cutting down trees for the sake of greed. And the point that I'm making is, is that God gave us responsibility, right, to steward the earth. We are stewards. So, you know, we live here. So there's a right way to do everything and a wrong way to do everything. And so if you litter and pollute and destroy, then you're living in a polluted world that, quite frankly, is decaying. All because we, with our free will and our capabilities, are choosing to do the wrong thing. And that's up to us. And so if we do it God's way, then we'll live in plentiful. Everybody will have plenty to go around. Because we're actually aligning ourselves with His will, with His ways, right? And He's giving us insight and revelation as we come to Him. How to go about life appropriately and accurately and effectively so that you can see the right outcomes, right? So then, number four is the capacity for relationship. God is really, really big with relationships. Not just with Him, which was primarily the reason why He created us. The reason why you're created in the first place, if you've ever asked that question to yourself, why am I here? Well, that's a good question. And the answer is because God created you so that you can know Him and He can have a relationship with you. And why you, when you walk with God, and I will get to that and how to do that. We're going to go into the scriptures deep, deep, deep. And we're going to really dissect stuff. But... How you walk with God is basically through communication. You commune with Him through your heart, your heart's desires. And you, you let God know what's going on in your life. Some people journal. Some people speak. Some people even, you know, just their thoughts are reflective of their relationship with God in terms of like they're thinking about God and His wonderful deeds and His creation, this and that, and they're praising God. You can do all of the above. And this is ways that you can attach yourself, connect your heart to God. And it's pretty cool when He responds back through signs and wonders 
and even miracles. God responds back to you with your prayers. So you're not crazy, right? And it's not like uh, you're talking to the wind. You're talking to the creator of the wind. <laughs> you're talking to the creator of everything that you see around you, okay? And may I say that it's more logical to believe that a creator created everything than the theory of nothing created everything or gas or this or that because in the beginning you know evolutionists believe that nothing created everything which is scientifically impossible so think about that do some critical thinking how could nothing create anything so then number five is god gave us free will he didn't create robots he wants you to like out of the abundance of your heart follow him he wants you to make that decision with that conviction saying it is the right thing to do to follow god he doesn't want to force you or this or that it's more so like he will let us know you know as a good father i let my children know if you cross the street and you don't look to the left or the right you can get hit by a car right you can die you can lose your life as a result so that's a good thing for me as a father to explain to my children. Well, God, as a good father, tells us, listen, you have free will, and you can totally deny me and reject me and turn your, your back on me and not want anything to do with me, and that's, that's up to you. I'm going to leave that up to you, whether you want to or not. However, if you do that, you can get hit, like, so to speak, you know, quote, unquote, get hit by a car in the sense that, you're going to become a target of the enemy, Satan, because there is a devil. And you see the devil's deeds all over the place. You see his havoc, his mayhem, his chaos, his destruction. Okay? He's, he's like really busy in these end days. And so you see his work. And, well, if you're not connected to God and, and, and he, God's not covering you, then your life... If you're opening up doors to what the enemy is all about, which he's all about stealing, killing, and destroying, and you've adopted a lifestyle of kind of co-signing on a contract, so to speak, that, you know, I'm going to live like this instead of live like that. So instead of living in the light, right, I'm going to live like, like hell, right? And if you do that, essentially... You're giving away your rights. You're giving away yourself to these demons that come and inhabit that, that vessel that by their actions, they have invited them into their life. And then as a result, that person is, they've got all these symptoms and issues and, and all these problems that sin creates. One of which is death, death to their soul death to the inside right they feel like they're in darkness they feel restless and without peace they feel lost and confused they feel suicidal and all this other stuff the sin creates and so god says come out with your free will recognize that this is not the route that you were intended to take humble yourself repent ask god for forgiveness Turn from those ways and follow me, Jesus said. And you'll find that God will restore you, heal you, deliver you, bless you, and put you on a road that leads to eternal life. Thank God for forgiveness, right? We would be, yeah, that's God's goodness. So then, right, our free will gets us in trouble or our free will gets us very, very blessed. It's up to us. So then it takes self-control, discipline, honor integrity all of these traits and characteristics to get us to be on the right side with god right it's very easy to veer off course but it takes concentration and focus to stay on course with god right it takes uh, discipline now we have to attain that through practice we don't we're not born with it you have to subject yourself to a lifestyle that you know in your heart of hearts is the right thing to do your conscience is pleased with you when you do the right thing by other people and, and by God as well. And your conscience also tells you when you're in the wrong. And to, to abide by 
these uh, moral principles of, okay, I'm going to do right, is to do yourself a service, right? And so then you won't walk around with guilt, shame, and condemnation. So then we understand what sin and the fallen nature produces, right? Uh, it basically, you blame everything on God. Everything that's going wrong, God gets the, the blame for it, right? And you just continue to decay, decay, decay. Right? Some people go to their deathbed with all this hatred for God in their heart when all they really needed to do is come to the conclusion that, you know, let me turn from this eat like this bitterness, this anger, this rage, this anger, which is not even natural. It's not natural. A lot of atheists with one part of their lip, right, they say God is not real, and the other part they blaspheme his name. All throughout the day You can tell the contempt they have towards God Through how much they hate Him Knowing in their heart of hearts He is real But they want to hurt Him So they say He's not real Because it makes them feel better Like in terms of getting back at God But really they know He's real And if you dig You'll find they hate God Because maybe a loved one died Maybe they prayed to God And He didn't answer that prayer Okay and I would say to those people that we all have had circumstances and situations where our prayers weren't answered or where, where uh, Satan came and did his bidding and, uh, and killed one of our loved ones. I would say that that happens quite frequently to all of humanity. And so it's like some people choose, I'm going to blame God. And other people say, you know what, I'll see them in heaven. They'll change their perspective. They'll say, you know, God, I don't really understand. I pray for you to give me understanding about this situation. But I understand also that you are sovereign. And that, you know, it's a humbling of yourself, right? And often when people judge God and this and that, they're prideful individuals, right? And so that's a condition of the heart. So let's see what's next on the list. So, need for redemption. And, you know, lastly, what I would say about that is also the condition of their life. It really points out, you know, how much they need God. And how God would be there in the snap of a finger if they just, you know, get to the place of stop accusing God for what the devil did. The devil is the evil one here. God is the one that restores and heals and delivers. Jesus says, I came to give you life and life more abundant, but the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So why don't you ever hear, you know, people say, man, the devil took so-and-so, you know, they killed him, right? You always hear God took him. Well, God is the good one, right? God could have stopped it. That's the other uh, part of the, the people's uh, you know scenario of oh well, God could have stopped it if He wanted to and this and that, but we live in a fallen world where people have free will, and people are making their decisions. They're putting there's scenarios for every situation. Okay, some people, right? They're hanging around with thugs and, and they get shot and they die, right? And you know, and then there's other people that are sweet and lovely to be around. They die. And then it's like, well, why did that happen to the good person? Well, God, this is the thing about God, man. You're never going to understand everything. Perhaps God will give you the revelation on it. But there's a season for everything. And we're not here to live forever. So if, they, if it was their time, it was their time before God even created them in the first place. He already had assigned their departure date. And we have to trust God's plan that He knows what's best. And, you know, sometimes if a person is not getting right, somebody dies, that's what gets that person to get right. So, you know, there's people that they're so hard-headed and so stiff-necked and so prideful and they, they won't turn to God until something like that happens, a catastrophe where a loved one dies. And now all of a sudden... Yes, they're super bitter and angry with God. But when all of that starts to meddle down and they start to, 
you know, get humbled, right? The prideful will be humbled, so to speak. So then as they go through life's journey and this and that, now they're hurt and broken and angry. They go on to do more and more uh, destruction on earth. The devil's using them to just destroy lives in the name of being angry because God, quote unquote, took my brother or whatever. And what happens is that when that journey takes its course and, and they run out of gas, they, they come to a place of giving up, tapping out, submitting, getting on their, their knees. Maybe they're screaming at God. Maybe that's the initiation to the conversion. But the point that I'm making is, is that they have that breaking point where they say, okay, God, I want answers. Why did you allow this to happen? When they reach that point, that is the initiation. They're scratching the surface of their salvation. Because this is the place where you, you have a, an encounter with the Lord. And when God encounters you, you know, you're not in control of that encounter. I mean, I've had encounters with God where my knees buckle. And I, I didn't have any, any say in whether or not my knees were going to buckle or not. I'll just put it to you like that. And I've had other encounters where I just weep, weep, weep a lot. Like cry, cry, cry. And again, I didn't, I didn't have any control over that. God is our creator. When we are in his presence, the reason why you bless um, other people blaspheme and stuff and, and speak ill of God is because you don't have a, a, the right depiction of God. When you speak of God, you're talking of an idol that you've made up in your own imagination, right? Because if you saw God, you would never say anything negative about Him. First of all, from the terror of how immense He is. But second of all, because you see that He represents everything that, that you want Him to represent. Our innermost being wants God to be good. And when you see that He's good, you're delighted in Him, right? And... You know, you'll get answers. You'll get answers in the future as to why this or that happens. But God calls us to trust and, and to walk by faith and not by sight and not by your senses, but just to get to know Him. And how do you get to know Him? You get to know God through a few ways. One is reading the Bible. As you read the Bible, you know, you start to get more and more insight on who He is, right? If you dig deep, you get to know each subject line by line as to what you want to learn. So if you go to Google as an example and you put verses about, um, you know, love, then all the verses about love will come and you'd learn about love as to how God ordained love, what he has to say about love, everything about love. It'll have the verse right there for you and you get to know the subject about love. You can do that on faith or fear, or anxiety, you can say that, you, you, and, but the point is, is that you get to learn what the Bible says about that particular subject. When you start to learn about every subject, you'll get to the point of really getting to know who God is, and guess what? You'll be feeding your soul. You'll be feeding your soul, and that's like a big deal, because when you feed your soul, you feel like you're empowered, you're strengthened. You're an overcomer. You're, you're, you're not weak. You're not weary. You're not tired. You're not restless, right? You're actually a person that, you know, uh, you know, you're in the sunshine. You're in the sunlight. You know, it's like, it's a big difference between being in darkness and the sunlight. So people uh, that are not in the sunlight, they're in darkness. They're negative, and they're they're in the in, in a desolate, dry place. So. Let's end the video with the rest of them, which has to do with uh, hope and restoration. This is what God promises us, okay? Even though you go through the wilderness, even though you suffer, even though you go through hard times, even though you lose loved ones, okay? All of this is promised to us, right? Remember, remember the, I don't know why God has me touching on the losing of loved ones. Someone on the chat is going to be able to identify as to why, because maybe they're going through that right now, but... I'm reminded of when Lazarus died and they wanted Jesus to go and um, 
and so basically heal him right jesus went a few days later and lazarus was dead they wept and jesus wept as well he felt what it was like to lose a loved one right and so then he rose uh lazarus back from the dead and you know he was showing his his uh his power and his miracle so he could he did that to demonstrate who he was who is god so god is able to do anything he's able to take a dead situation and make it alive again and so you know maybe the death of a loved one makes you live again for god that's what i'm trying to say but i don't know everybody's situation is different it just i you know i would have to hear your situation i really understand but i i just know that in the end god makes all things work together for the good and that is what we want so even though if you suffer you you're you're, you're breaking tears right now in the end god will make that horrible horrible thing that happened and because he's god he's able to do things that are mind-boggling how did you do that how did you get the worst time of my life and make it into a place where now i'm thanking you that it happened how 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 i don't even understand how you did that but god is able so then uh number 10 is eternal destiny without god we we're not here for anything we're just here like that's sad that's a sad existence to live but God ha has given you purpose and destiny, right? So tie yourself to the Lord. If you have any questions, I'm here to try to assist you so to get you on the journey with God. But understand that there's full um, of possibilities of what God wants to do with your life. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. He wants to bring you up, edify you, fix you, heal you, deliver you. And God is able to do everything I just said and infinite more. But we have to press in. We have to connect ourselves to the vine. We have to allow him open up those doors. Look and do make inventory on where it is that you're shut down. Where it is that you have closed the door on God for disappointment, discouragement reasons, whatever it may be. But if you feel angry towards God in any kind of way from any segment in your life in the past, don't leave that there in terms of, okay, like I'm moving on with my life, but that bitterness is, I'm carrying that with me. Address it. Write things down. Make inventory about things. Work out your salvation. Let God know or, or allow Holy Spirit to minister to you. Where, where do you need help? Where do you need healing? Where do you need deliverance? And start to pinpoint what the Bible has to say about those particular subjects. And then, and then submit or, or just position yourself in a position where you can receive a fresh touch of God in that area if you got to fast and pray then do that if you got to be alone with god away from distractions do that but the point is is that you be led by the spirit and with the intention behind your heart you ask god and he is faithful he's faithful to meet all your needs according to the riches growing jesus christ god bless you guys